Okay, so this is phylum chordata. I divided this into two parts. So this is part one. And this is actually the last phylum that we will be discussing for the crash course series on animal diversity. So um, I divided this into two parts because it's quite long. So let's get on to it. So first, the defining characteristics um, of this phylum is essentially they have five, although um, many sources actually just consider four. But um, Hickman, so this, the, the zoology book that uh, many um, of your professors actually refer to, well, adds this endo style. So let's just add it here. So first um, is the notochord. So the notochord is a supporting structure. So it's like, you can think of it as a primitive vertebra, or like a, a, a primitive spinal column there. So it's something like that. What it does it is it provides support for the entire body, okay? So it provides actual support. So remember when we discussed the skeleton, actual includes the head and the spinal cord, right? Appendicular. Um, refers to the limbs. So the notochord is somewhere there. So we, we will see later. And next is they have um, chordates have a dorsal hollow nerve cord. So uh, that means, so you have to be very specific. It is dorsal, it is hollow. Okay, if you just say it is a nerve cord, it doesn't count because other organisms also have nerve cords. So you have to specify. So it's dorsal, so it is located dorsally, and it is hollow. Okay. And another thing is they have pharyngeal gill slits. Okay. So that means the pharynx has slits. Okay. And then another thing is they have a post-anal tail, which means a tail that comes after the anus, hence post-anal. And this, the endostyle. So the endostyle is actually a structure that secretes mucus um, to help trap the food. Okay, and um, in some organisms, this eventually this is also considered as the thyroid gland. So let's look at a typical body plan of your chordate. Although, it, if anything, it looks a lot like branchiostoma. So let's just bear with this illustration. So here we will see the form features. So, but the endocyle you can say is somewhere here. Okay. So first the notochord. So it runs along the axis of the entire organism. Okay. And next is your dorsal hollow nerve cord. And then vent, and then you also have since this is your anus. So this is the tail that comes after your anus, since post anal. And also you have your mouth, and then this is your pharynx, so you have slits in your pharynx, okay? So these are the features that essentially would be unique to chordates, okay? And you might be thinking, you as a human being, I mean, do you have a tail? Do you have gill slits? Do you have a notochord? Right now, as you are, um, you don't, but... You did when you were still a fetus. At a very early developmental stage, you did. And so, what classifies as a chordate is essentially um, you having these features at any point in your life. So, even if you do not, even if many of these features do not persist in adulthood, um, as long as you, at some point in your life, you've had all of these, then you are considered a chordate, okay? So you must be wondering, what is the destiny of the notochord? So, um, eventually the spinal column, so you will form the skull here, right? And then eventually you will form the vertebrae, right? So the vertebrae, and then there will be a cavity in your vertebrae, which will house the spinal cord, okay? So now for the vertebrae, so the notochord in human beings, so we have what we call, so your vertebrae um, are lined up like this, right? So in between each vertebral segment is called an intervertebral disc, okay? 
Now there is a pulpous mass in there, and that is essentially what remains of your notochord. So tissue, so bone tissue will build around this, and that's why the notochord eventually disappears. Okay, there. So for the taxonomy, um, see we have a lot to cover, which is why we have two parts. So for the first part, let's um, deal with the more boring ones. So let's deal with these two subphyla. And then for the last part, um, for the second part, we will be dealing with subphyla vertebrata, which includes all of these classes, okay? But I'm pretty sure you guys can relate to all of these classes. So um, first, let's discuss the sea squirts and eventually the lancelets, okay? So subphylum urochordata. So what's unique to the subphylum is they have the tunic. So this is an outer covering made of cellulose, which is essentially non-living. Okay. So you can say it's like a coating or it's like a jacket of sorts. Okay. And in here, for them, the notochord and the nerve cord occur only in the free-swimming larvae. So the adults do not have the notochord nor do they have the nerve cord but the larvae do and the representative species we have is pandosia um, as some of you said they look like potatoes okay but here's how they really look like in the sea at least some of them so here you have a sea squirt so they're commonly known as sea squirts so why squirt well, I mean, if you squeeze that, I mean, technically, it's like water will squirt out. So, you know, it's, it's like, ah, uh, just a funny way to make it. Okay. And here you have um, two main structures here would be your in-current siphon and your ex-current siphon. So the water enters through here. So it is um, it, um, delivered to the mouth and then the pharynx, it is digested and then eventually leads to the anus and then it comes out, okay? So water enters through here and then exits through there. So those are just the main structures of your sea squirt. So you're thinking, how does this plastic bag, you know, I mean, how is this even remotely similar to me? Where are the features that you discussed earlier? So let's look at a diagram. So this is the adult form, so we mentioned the incurrent siphon and the excurrent siphon, and this is the larval form. So the larval form is free swimming, so what happens is um, here you have the mouth, and then again you have the pharynx with the slits, all right, and see there is a tail, there is a dorsal hollow nerve cord, and there is also a notochord. So the structures are present, okay? And what this does is, um, this larva, what it will do is it will attach to a substrate. So let's just draw the substrate. So it will attach to the soil, or I'm sorry, the substrate, as in like the rock bottom or a coral or a sponge or whatever. It will attach to a substrate. Eventually, these features will disappear, and then it will turn into this. Okay? And this is the adult form. And so it's just stuck to a substrate for the rest of its life. There. So that would be your urochordate. That's pandosia, or your sea squirt. Now let's deal with the subphylum cephalochordata. So what's unique to this subphylum is that all of the five trademark features, or the five defining characteristics of chordates, exist throughout its entire life. So that means you're going to see it all the way from birth to death. You're going to see these trademark features. And the example that we have is branchiostoma. So this is why um, this is the only uh, specimen that we have that is actually mounted on a slide. So this is the one that you see under the microscope. And if you look under the microscope, you will really see all of the structures. You will see the notochord, you will see the hollow nerve cord, you will see everything, okay? So let's take a look at, I mean, it, it, yeah, it kind of looks fun in a slide, but it looks like this in, you know, in its natural habitat. So it's kind of like a see-through um, fish, all right? And so these, these little segments there are actually the myotomes or the myomeres or the muscle segments there. 
Okay, and then that's the whole thing. It looks like this little see-through fish. If we look at the diagram, then um, here. Okay, so these were the muscle segments that we were talking about. So you must be thinking, again, there are segments. So that means, yes, even chordates exhibit metamerism. Okay, there is serial repetition of certain parts. There is segmentation. So yes, and they function in unison. They function as a whole. So yes, even chordates exhibit metamerism. Even humans exhibit metamerism. So how so? Remember that you have your brain and then your vertebrae, right? So your vertebrae, they all kind of look the same, right? The bones, each vertebra is essentially a segment. And the fact that they're, you know, they're working together to support the entire body, then yes, humans also exhibit metamerism. Okay. Now, bro now uh, just that's just a segue. Okay, but now let's go back to branchiostoma. So here you will see, again, it has the notochord, it has the nerve cord, it has um, the gill slits, and it has the endostyle here, which secretes mucus to trap the food. Okay, so the buccal cavity, so it brings the food here. The endostyle secretes the mucus to trap the food. You have the gill slits. You have the anus, and after the anus, you have the tail. So, ta-da, that is your bronchiostoma. So even if it is an adult, you will see all of these features. And that is unique to cephalochordates. Okay? So that's it for the two subphyla. That's um, a bit of the intro. And um, so just, again, disclaimer, I would like to thank the owners of these photos. Thank you for making them available online for everyone else to enjoy and for everyone else to learn from. So again, this is just me. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. So let's deal with part two in a bit.